Hi, my name is Keith Cooper, Northlight Images, and in this video I'm going to have a look at a printer which Epson US announced yesterday, and um, I was a bit surprised. Somebody emailed me some details of it, and it's an update to the P5000. Now, the P5000, big printer here, I've got lots of videos about it, and I've used it. I've got a detailed written review of it, written several years ago. It's a great printer. It's a roll printer. It has 11 inks, although only 10 are in use at any one time, so you have to switch between blacks on it. But we have a new printer, the Epson P5370. Now, the 70 bit told me immediately when I checked my email, because I, I was out doing some teaching work yesterday, teaching sort of architectural photography to architecture students, which I, I do occasionally at a local university. And I looked at this 5370, it's Epson US. I went and sure enough it was. That means it will be the P5300, 5300 in the UK, Europe and many other regions. Uh, the 70 bit just says it's a US version for it. So that's, that's right. I'll refer to it as 5300 for this, just for yeah, convenience sake. Um, looking at some pictures of the printer, it looks pretty much identical to the P5000 here. Um, there are a few changes in shape. Now, this particular type of printer, 17 inch printer, roll paper, uh, quite a heavy, hefty printer, has been part of Epson's range for 20 years. In fact, 20 years ago, a r rumor of uh, which was a, a leaked document about the Stylus Pro 4000 was the very first rumour article put to it 20 years ago on the Northlight Images site, years ago, when I used to sort of follow rumour. It's the very first. Article. So it's quite good that we come along 20 years later, although the printer won't be available till next year, that 20 years later, we've got the latest version of it. And these have all been printers aimed at commercial use. Now, They've developed over the years. The P5000 here, as I say, has got the 10 inks. They've always had the black ink swap. The 5300 gets rid of the black ink swap. It reduces the number of inks, permanent inks installed, to down from 11 with the swap, down to 10. There's a few other significant differences, and I'll go through some of the features here. And potentially, this is one of the best photo printers at 17 inch that's going to be around for the next year or so. Because we don't know yet what Canon's going to do with respect to the Pro 1000, so you know things could change there. But at the moment, if people want a 17 inch printer with roll paper support, and I mean proper roll paper support with a powered roller, uh, with a cutter, uh, all things like a heavy duty printer, I say the 5000. But always the problem with the 5000 has been, it has been designed for commercial use. That means you need to switch it on and do something every week. Leaving that printer for any length of time is not a good idea. So what is the 5300? It's essentially the P5000 chassis. So it's going to be big. It's going to need two people to shift it compared to the P900, which is light and some would say flimsy. But, you know, it's it's it, that's very much a consumer oriented printer. This one is or meant as a pro photography. For if you do lots of photo prints, this is aimed at you. So what's it got in it that's different to the 5000? Well, from what I can see, information I've checked, it has essentially the same print head, although what drives that print head and everything else is, is quite different, is the same print head as the P900. The ink set is the same as the P700-900. So that means that the print quality is essentially going to be the same as what you can get from a P900, which is very good. Now, I've reviewed it, I've got detailed review and testing of the P900, but it really does. If the print head's the same, the ink set is the same, but rather than the 50 mil cartridges of the, um, the P900, the P500 
5300 will take 200 milliliter ink carts. Now, 200 milliliter ink carts will last quite a while. Uh, there are quite a lot of them. Now, this is, uh, this picture is from the press release, this. I don't have any pictures of the actual thing yet. I don't expect that I'll get one of these to review until sometime next year at the earliest, early next year. It's not going to be available for a while. But if we look at the uh, front here, we see the front panel down and there are five inks. There are two blacks, photo black, uh, matte black, yellow, cyan, and magenta. Uh, you'll notice that there is a space next to this. That's because there are six inks in this one here. Uh, there are five inks in here, so there's a blanking panel on it. So it really is, there's a lot of similarity. Now, the good bit about that is that this printer was bought out 2016 or so when I last when I reviewed it. And this printer is rock solid. You have got five years of development and refinement of the mechanism to get it. So it's based by being built on the P5000 chassis, it's gonna be solid. Now, any new printer always needs checking out. So yeah, I'll reserve judgment on this until I actually get one to test. But it means that the roll paper mechanism will be this one, and that works really well. You feed your roll paper, it has auto feeding, it's auto tensioning, so it, it adjusts, you've got feed. The software for this will be uh, the Epson print layout, which I use for this one, um, which I notice has, when well, it's listed for this one, for the ABW black and white print mode, and this is a print made on this one for using the ABW black and white print mode, that it has proofing for the black and white mode in Epson print layout may make it even more useful. Um, I don't know whether that's a feature they've snuck in recently that I haven't noticed or whether it's a feature that will come when you use this. But the display shows the inks here. Now that display, yeah, looks looks like a cross between this one here and what I see on the P900. Uh, this is you know, quite oldish technology in some ways, but it's rock solid from a mechanical point of view. But we've got the P900 print head, which has been designed for, I don't want to say amateur use, but has been designed for um, consumer use where a printer won't be switched on every time. So what it means is that you, know, you don't have to swap black inks, which is always a bit of a pain on, on this one and uh, previous printers like that. Um, it means that you don't have to swap black inks and you can use the printer less frequently. Now, I'm still, if I was to replace this with one of the new ones, I would still have a diary reminder every week, pop up and tell me, have you used the P5000, 5300? If not, switch it on, do a nozzleless ink check or print a page, you know, a page on it. One of the other features about this is very nice printer that I find useful is that it has a paper tray on it. You can load up paper. Now it won't take thick art papers here, but it will take photo paper. If you wanted to put, and I think it takes A2, it says 17 inches of specs, but that's because it's US. If you wanted to put A2 light photo papers, uh, luster paper in this, you can stack them up and you can print. Now, I don't use that. I use a manual feed when I'm printing stuff on this, sheets on this, but I have it loaded at the moment. It's got a few, you know, 100 sheets or so of A3 copier paper. Remember that the big market for the P5000 was for proofing. Sales of this particular printer for the fine art printing market were a relatively small part of it. So the version of this that was meant for proofing was the one with the violet ink. This one has an extra light grey, but the violet ink extended the gamut. This one has orange ink and green ink in it as well. So this one has a very good printer gamut. I'll have to compare, although I could just look at the profiles that I've made for the P900, because I suspect they're going to be very similar between P900 and this, and the, and the 5300, when it, 5300 when it comes out. Now, I suspect they're going to be similar in gamut and things, but if you're using one of these printers for proofing, what do you do? Well, I have no reason to think that Epson are going to actually discontinue the version of this designed for the proofing market. So if you're using a P5000, the violet ink version for proofing, I think you should be okay for a good few years yet being able to get replacements and new printers 
because these printers, when they're used in a commercial proofing environment, are run heavily. Uh, that's what they're meant for. They're meant to be used every day. This, this printer will have no problem running all day long. Things aren't going to overheat. You're not going to get problems with it. Do that with a P900, one of the small, smaller consumer printers, particularly if you go to a, an ink tank printer like an 8550. They're meant for relatively light duty. They are not meant for churning stuff out day in, day out. Uh, you will quickly uh, use up aspects of it, you know, reach the service life of things in a printer like the 8550. I suppose you could say because of the larger carts in this, this is as near as you're going to get to an ink tank version of the P900 for a while yet. Um, I don't see that happening anytime soon. The, the, the best ink tank printer uh, at the moment uh, in the Epson range is the 8550. Or if you're printing just on glossy photo papers, luster papers and that, the Epson 18100. Although for some strange reason, Epson US won't sell what is the best out and out photo paper printer they make with ink tanks on it. Don't know why. If you've got a problem with that, ask Epson US. I genuinely don't know. But anyway, so there is the printer. Anything else for it? Well, um, the green orange, the lack of green orange inks, uh, that does make me wonder whether some people will notice that. But until I do profiles and testing, I won't be able to say. Um, so we have a printer on its way, um, sooner announced sooner than I expected. I'd, I'd been, you know, if you'd asked me a month ago, when did I expect to see a replacement for this? It would have been sometime next year. What I wasn't really expecting would be that there would be a more photo oriented, oriented version of this particular printer, which is what the 5300 seems to be. So, um, yeah. I will have one. I've got no further information than that. I'll put some links, what I have got in the notes to this video. I have no further information at the moment. Uh, so feel free to let me know anything you know, and um, I will keep that updated on the website. There's an Epson news page on the website where I put any things like this that I find for new products and stuff. So a very interesting printer. And I could say potentially it gets around of a lot of the problems that people, people who didn't quite like the P900. What were their issues? Paper handling, no problem with this. Roll handling with the paper resting on the rollers and things like that, mm, not with this. No cutter, you get it with this. Anyway, is it the best? Well, we shall see, but uh, it's a very promising introduction in new printers. As I say, if you've got any questions, let me know. Um, really do appreciate it. And um, you know, if you're new to the channel, uh, have a look at what I've got. Lots of printing related stuff, uh, lots of links, lots of other areas as well, specialist lenses and things as well. So uh, yeah, if you fancy subscribing, that would be appreciated. Thank you very much. Bye.